of gold, peace on the earth, goodwill to men from heaven's all gracious Good to see everybody here today, and uh, I hope that you are going to ready to enjoy a wonderful time of, of lifting up our, our hearts in, in praise uh, to the Lord, celebrating His birthday. Um, just uh, want to remind you that we will be having services tomorrow morning at 1030, and so it's a great uh, opportunity to invite someone. Um, I know that there are some churches that are not having services on, on Sunday morning, and, uh, and uh, there are people that are looking. Uh, to, to be a part of a, of a worship service. And so, so I just encourage you, if you know people tonight, you know, take a little bit of time out of maybe some of your, some of your family uh, get-togethers and, and things and, uh, and uh, call someone, invite them, or if you see someone, take one of these invite cards with you and uh, hand those out to, to people for tomorrow morning. Uh, I know they're going to be blessed. Um, we're also going to be taking an offering a little bit differently at the end of our service today. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll just have an offering uh, plate as you leave. And, uh, and any offering that you give tonight uh, will go directly to our benevolence fund. Um, there are lots of people that need help uh, sometimes uh, during this time of year. And uh, so we would encourage you uh, to give generously uh, for, for those types of things. And uh, like I said, there'll be offering plates next to uh, the place where you'll put your candles um, you'll, you'll turn your candles back in uh, at the end of the night, and so that'll be as you leave uh, tonight. Uh, but again, we're so glad that you're here, and uh, I'm so glad that so many families have decided to worship the Lord and, uh, and, and celebrate Christmas that way tonight. Would you stand with us, I think, and uh, as we continue to worship uh, the Lord together? Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep the 
silent stars go by yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight for Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep the angels keep their watch of wandering love O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth how silently how silently the wondrous gift is given so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his head no Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angel. to us. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head the stars in the sky look down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the last verse with us again and just let these be song, uh, words that come from your heart tonight be near me Lord Jesus I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me I pray bless all the dear 
seated and relax but to continue singing along with us for this song
Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to gather here in your presence. Lord, we thank you for songs that tell us about about you coming down to earth to be one of us. Lord, what a gift that is. That where we could not do anything to get to you, Lord, you solved the problem and you came to us. Lord, we are thankful for that. We are thankful for a human embodiment of you. For someone we can look to in Jesus that shows us the way, the truth, and the light. It shows us how you really are. And it shows us how to live in this world. That we can make this season about a lot of things, but, but ultimately this night, tomorrow, these are times about you and about your birth. And Lord, we just want to, we want to thank you with all that is in us for sending us your son to show us the way. God, we love you tonight, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I don't know about you, but I remember lots of family traditions uh, growing up and and uh, around the Christmas time, and uh, sometimes those uh, family traditions uh, have to do with uh, the stories that we that uh, that were told, maybe a, a by a fireplace or or uh, you know just uh, at a dinner table. Um, uh, one of the most popular stories, obviously, at Christmas time is uh, is they'll read you the story of of Christmas of. Uh, of, of, of Jesus coming to us, and, and we're going to get to that tonight, but there are lots of other stories sometimes that help to illustrate that, and tonight I just want to read you a story. It's kind of, kind of what, I, what I do on Christmas Eve, is a, and it's kind of become a tradition for me over the years of ministry, is uh, finding stories that, that it, uh, I believe can warm us and, and excite us uh, and, and prepare us uh, to meet Jesus uh, when he comes and to help us to, to recognize him uh, when he comes to us. And, and uh, this story is called A Mother's Story. She sat on the floor near her three-year-old and handed him assorted ornaments to put on the Christmas tree. He stood on a holiday popcorn can to reach the middle section of the tree, which was as high as he could reach. He giggled with a child's pure delight every time she said, Christmas is coming. Although she had tried many times to explain Christmas to him, her son believed that Christmas was a person. Christmas is coming, he would giggle, and all the presents are for Christmas when she comes. She was sitting back watching him and smiling and, and watching as he carefully placed each ornament on the tree. Surely, he can't know enough about Christmas to love it this much, she thought. They lived in a small apartment in San Francisco. And although the weather was usually mild this Christmas season, it was chilly enough for them to need a fire. On Christmas Eve, she, she threw on a starter log and, and watched her son sliding around the apartment, sock-footed on the hardwood floors. He was anxiously awaiting Christmas. Soon he couldn't stand it any longer, and he began jumping up and down, and, and, and uh, when will she be here, Mommy? I can't wait to give her all of these presents. Again, she tried to explain to him, you know, son, Christmas is a time of year. It's not a person. And it will be here sooner than you know. At 12 o'clock midnight, Christmas will be here. But you'll probably be sleeping. So when you wake up in the morning, it will be Christmas. 
He laughed as if she were telling him a silly joke. Mommy, will Christmas eat breakfast with us? He spread out his arms all over all the gifts under the tree. All these gifts are for Christmas. All of them. She tickled his belly and laughed with him. And, and yes, she said, they're all for Christmas. He ran around the apartment until fatigue slowed him down. And, and then they laid on the rug by the tree together. And when he finally fell asleep, she picked him up and carried him to his bed. She decided on hot chocolate before bed, and as she was drinking it, she sat near a window looking down on the decorated streets of San Francisco. It was a beautiful scene. But there was one thing that distracted her. Directly outside of their apartment, in a spot where they usually left the garbage, was what looked like a crumpled heap of old clothes. And she soon realized that, that clump was. It was an old homeless woman who usually hung out at the corner store down the street. She was a familiar sight in the neighborhood. And the mom had tossed a few coins uh, into her bag a few times while shopping for groceries. She never asked for money, but she received quite a few handouts by passerbys because she looked so helpless. As the young mother looked out this Christmas Eve, she wondered about this poor old woman. Who was she? Uh, what was her story? Uh, she should be with family, not sleeping on the cold street at this special time of year. A sinking feeling hit the young mother inside. Here she was with this beautiful child sleeping in the next room. She had often felt sorry for herself as a single mom, but at least she wasn't alone and living in the streets. How hopeless and sad that would be for anyone, let alone a woman who must be about 80 years old. But what could I do about it, she thought. If I had known earlier, maybe I could have found a place for this old woman to sleep for the night and, and spend Christmas. But then it hit her. Share Christmas with this woman. I don't know her, she thought. <laughs> what if she hurts us? What if she's sick? What if, what if, and then the excuses stopped as she thought about what her son said. Christmas is coming. The mother went to the front door and walked down the steps to the street and asked the old woman if, if she would like to come inside. And at first, the woman hardly acknowledged her she tried to coax her. She said she didn't want any help. But then the young mother said, well, I could use a little company. And the old woman relented and agreed to spend Christmas with the young mother and her son. The young mother fixed a bed in the living room on the fold-out couch. And the next morning, the whole house was awakened by the little boy yelling at the top of his lungs, Christmas is here, Mommy! Christmas is here! Mommy quickly pulled on her robe and hurried to the living room where she found a very excited little boy presenting a very surprised Christmas with gifts from under the tree. We've been waiting for you, she shouted joyfully. He giggled and he danced around as she opened the presents that he had given her. Christmas had not known a Christmas like this for a very long time. And neither had the young mom. The young mother also knew that it would take more than one special day to lift the burden of this lonely old woman's weary heart. But for at least one day, this day, Christmas was special again. See, 2,000 years ago, we see another mother's story playing out somewhat similar to this one. A young mother, away from home, gave birth to a baby that was destined to save the world from themselves. 
Mary was told that the child she was carrying was not hers, but it belonged to the entire world. And I'm sure this is not what she pictured for her first pregnancy. I'm sure as she watched the shepherds and the magi worship her child, there was a part of her that didn't want to share Jesus with the rest of the world. But God had spoken to her through the angels. And she accepted that Christmas was truly a person. A person who would be shared by everyone. Christmas will be here tomorrow. Jesus has come. Mary has shared him. And it's important for us to look forward to the birth of Christ all over again. As if it were the very first time. Because you see, Christmas is not just a day. Christmas is a person. The person of of Jesus Christ. And so tonight as we prepare to light candles, as we prepare maybe to go and have dinner together, open presents in the morning, remember that Christmas is coming. No, remember Jesus is coming. And the question for us is, will we recognize him when he comes? In Luke, the second chapter, the story we're all familiar with, could you listen to it with new ears? At that time, the Roman emperor, Augustus, decreed a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census, and because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to the first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth cloth, and, and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, Praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on peace on earth to whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let us go to Bethlehem. Let us see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was a baby lying in the manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished. But Mary kept all of these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying 
and praising God for all of them, for all that they had heard and seen. Because it was just as the angel told them. The light of the world is coming in to our life tonight. Hopefully. Jesus is coming. Have you recognized him? Have you been able to see him? Tonight we're going to share the light of the world with each other. If you'll prepare your candles, I'll light mine from the Christ candle. And then I will share it with uh, someone on the front rows or second rows. And then if you would just, as we sing Silent Night together, would you share the light of the world uh, with the person next to you or behind you? And uh, let's sing with joy. Picture a day when not only uh, we see Jesus coming in the traditional in the manger, but let us rejoice in the fact that he's coming again. And we will all recognize him when he comes then. Let us be a people who are joyful for that second. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior. 
Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you that, Father, really there is nothing that we can do to, to get to you. That Christmas kind of represents the fact that you've done all the work by coming to us. You came to us uh, as a helpless baby so that you could grow and live like all of us, so that you could experience the same issues and same hardships and same joys, so that we could know that it is possible to live a life of joy. Father, I just pray for each and every person within the sound of my voice tonight. I pray that this Christmas would, would be the most special ever not only because they'll be with family and, and not simply because they might get what they've always wanted, but that they would remember that, uh, that this day that we're going to celebrate tomorrow morning, that this day is, is the beginning of hope for mankind. And when everything is crumbling around us, I pray that you would help us to remember Christmas that you would infuse in us a new hope. A hope that something is better because of, of what Jesus has done for us. Father, I just ask for your blessing to be upon these people tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, God bless you. I would like to remind you that uh, a lot of people I do this time of year uh, need things and from time to time they, they come to church asking for that and so as you leave and, and as you discard your your uh, your candles in the in the basket as you go uh, if you wanted to leave a, uh, an offering for our benevolence fund 100 percent of that money goes uh, to to uh, people that are in need and so uh, it's not a normal offering for us but a special one and so I think it'd be a wonderful way uh, to celebrate Christmas by by leaving an offering like that. Merry Christmas. And I look forward to seeing hopefully all of you tomorrow and uh, invite someone to Christmas services tomorrow as we continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus. God bless you. Go in peace. <laughs>